Now let's come back and start with your last concept of the chapter that is corrosion. So now when uh, as a child you would have learned what is corrosion, your teacher would have thought eating up of the metal by environmental conditions that is what you would have studied in grade 6 isn't it. So now we are going to study the concept of rusting of iron under corrosion. So let us first write the definition. Okay, I, uh, I think it's easy okay. Let us not write we are grade 12. So eating up of the metal by environmental conditions that is the presence of electrolytes like sodium chloride, sulfur dioxide or in the presence of air, water all these together corrodes the metal surface. Now let us come back and uh, study uh, the grade 12 uh, standard. Corrosion is basically of three types okay. So <coughs> definition I think you can write next. So types. So corrosion is again divided into first one it is called biochemical corrosion. eating up of the metal. Second would be electrochemical corrosion and chemical corrosion. Okay, these are the three types. So, what did the CBSE do? CBSE has pick, picked up electrochemical corrosion for you. So, your rusting of iron example, it comes under electrochemical corrosion. Rusting of iron. This. So, let us come back and study electrochemical corrosion. Why am I telling this? In the exam, they may ask you, explain in brief electrochemical corrosion. Don't get confused. It is nothing but rusting of iron. So, let us erase this. Now, next important, I am going to write or start with the topic rusting of iron. Nothing but electrochemical corrosion. So, and we are going to see the chemical reactions also here. Electro in the chemical, electrochemical corrosion. Now what happens in rusting of iron, first as soon as this question is given to you, first try to practice this diagram and go. And why <clears throat> this is a very important concept to explain to the examiner because we consider both anodic and cathodic reaction which you have to show. If you forget the whole step, show it in the diagram, you will get marks for that. Done. So now what happens, suppose let us assume this is a metal surface. Now to this metal surface, what do you have? The metal surface is all, always exposed to environmental conditions. What are the environmental conditions? So the metal surface is exposed to air. It is exposed to water. It is exposed to electrolytes, right? We have salt, carbon dioxide gas, sulfur dioxide gas, which is evolved from the vehicles, isn't it? So uh, what do you say? NaCl salts. It is exposed to carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, all these are electrolytes. So air, water and we will write this as electrolytes. Now during this process, what is happening? The metal surface, this is your metal piece. The metal surface now starts acting as two sides, like what is the uh, electro anodic uh, side and the cathodic side. So when this is exposed to all these conditions, right, first important, let us see what there are two sides which are created, anodic oxidation. Now the metal piece whatever is there I said Fe plus 2 already I have written that Fe gives me Fe plus 2 plus 2 electrons. The E0 cell value for this which is observed uh, to be equal to minus 0 0.44 volts. From here the two electrons they get because from anode to cathode and it has to move these electrons from here they get transferred to oxygen because I said both together in the presence of atmospheric oxygen I said air, air means is nothing but okay oxygen. From there they carry to this so cathodic reaction you will write you will copy the same reaction right oxygen picks up four protons plus because four protons means four electrons it gives us two water molecules done so the e naught cell for this value is equal to 1.23 volts done so uh, if i have to multiply now suppose here these are four electrons isn't it so what should i do i have to multiply with two when i multiply with two then only i'll get electrons cancel isn't it so two twos are four electrons and four electrons on this side get cancelled what do i have two fe plus o2 gives me Fe plus 2 plus okay then you have H plus also here isn't it don't forget that as I did 4 H plus Fe 2 Fe oxygen here 4 H plus here gives me Fe plus 2 so which 2 Fe plus 2 it is 2 Fe plus 2 2 Fe plus 2 plus 2 water 
right done so here when i calculate the this in voltage i get e not cell is equal to 1.69 volts this is the voltage now <coughs> let's come back and see how from where what what actually will happen from here Now this cell reaction is complete. Now what's going to happen? This Fe whatever is there, Fe plus two ion, it's carried through water because there's a certain amount of water which is present in the metal surface. Along with this water and oxygen, it tries to form rust. Let's see what let, what is the reaction. We'll see first. Now first, how is it carried? Basically, water has a certain amount of electrolytes, isn't it? Due to rain water has because of the pollutants like sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, dissolved salts, and all these. This iron Fe is carried to the surface. Of this metal surface. Done. Now see here, let us write water since water contains electrolytes, strong electrolytes like NaCl, carbon dioxide, SO2. So what will happen? This will carry iron, Fe plus 2 ions to the surface. They carry Fe plus 2 ions to the surface correct yes so when they carry with the surface what actually is going to happen yeah <clears throat> just see fe plus 2 i said it's going to combine with oxygen i said it's going to combine with water now observe carefully suppose if i take four four twos are eight electrons to balance that you are going to take four protons just see here four twos are eight protons four twos are eight electrons done now what do we get this is going to combine with this oxygen and forms fe2o3 and how many protons are released eight protons are released now if i have to balance this is two 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 is a four two is a four that so now that fe2o3 whatever you have taken if i say you can write like this it combines with x water moly x mo x means that number of moles of water and it combines together forms Fe2O3 dot XH2O, XH2O, this is called rust. This rust other name we also call it as hydrated ferric oxide. Hydrated means water molecule, ferric oxide. This is also called rust. This is how your rust is going to form on the surface of the metal. Now uh, let's come back and finish off uh, the topic with rusting of uh, methods for preventing rusting of iron. So we have seen the cell reactions of iron. Let's see. So if they ask you for two marks, like I've listed out few, let us learn first what are these. So I can prevent rusting by surface coating. We very well, very well know when we paint something or with paint or varnish or something, the surface layer is protected from corrosion. So you can write the subheading and write uh, surface coating by painting applying varnishing simple nothing big in this now next by electropating iron with corrosion resistant metals okay what are corrosion resistant metal one once they've asked uh, this as one mark question so corrosion resistant metal basically are nickel chromium we do nickel coating chromium coating isn't it so what do we do we are going to take nickel and chromium they we are going to plate it in the surface of iron so that they are uh, less corrosive so it, the lower metal which is present is protected so corrosion resistant metals are these so we we also have this chrome plating isn't it it is made up of chrome plating which is used for your uh, rims of the wheels and all these yes the next alloying alloying we very well know it is a mixing up of two or more metals stainless steel also is an alloy so here i said nickel and chromium are less corrosive in nature so the same way by alloying i can mix iron plus nickel and chromium and and i can make an alloy so it doesn't rust anymore isn't it because these are less corrosive done in galvanization of iron so what we uh, you have studied this in grade 10th also galvanization is a process of uh, plating as a surface of zinc on the surface of iron okay we will not come back we will learn the electrode potentials first so now why are we taking zinc on the surface of iron first of all the e naught cell of zinc is more that means zinc is more electropositive than iron that is the first concept so what is galvanization first we are going to write it is layering of iron with zinc metal why i said zinc electrode potential it is more electropositive than iron so i can easily take that and coat it on the surface 
since zinc is more electropositive than iron so hope you know what is electropositive in nature right so the e not cell when i compare it's almost 0.764 zinc and 0.44 for iron so that, that, that is very very high so because of that concept i take that uh, iron layer and coat it with a thin layer of zinc and it's further protected from corrosion so that is galvanization next by tinning tinning is nothing but you're picking up tin sn right so in this what are we going to do we are going to take tin why am i taking tin tin this is your symbol because this is non-toxic in nature i am going to use it and layer it in the surface of uh, iron so what is tinning it is mixing up of tin on the surface of this metal means we are going to mix up and form a layer on the surface of the metal so that we are preventing it from corrosion so tinning we are using tin as it is non-toxic and mixing up with metal that's okay next by connecting iron to electropositive metal okay the same concept here magnesium is also more electropositive than uh, iron so what do they do i said magnesium is more electropositive they're going to take magnesium and they connect it or they, it serves as an anode now your iron is less than that so this axis is cathode so when this is more electropositive what does it do when it is acting in iron it will not allow the electrons to flow right so when it is not allowing the electrons to flow automatically when there is no flow of electrons iron will not get corroded isn't it so this is what is the concept how to write this by connecting iron to electropositive metals like magnesium so magnesium is made as anode and iron is made as cathode so no flow of electrons no flow of electrons hence iron is protected from corrosion